to be updating everybody on what's gone on in the past couple years of my life. Uh, why I fell off, how I got into drugs, jail, rehab, fighting, all that type of When I was shit. on TV, uh, music, like, you don't so have any idea how that It's like, I would be backstage shaking like this. Like, ready to go on stage with such bad anxiety that, like, I'm sitting there, like, breaking down mentally, like, crying on the bus. Like, I don't even want to go out in front of these people. Eli, what has gotten into you? Everything. Drugs aren't good. Okay, officer. You need to go teach. You, you need to go teach in the Derek program. You this whole. How about try some drugs? Stop live. Stop being a f where. And drugs aren't for everybody. If you oh, if you abuse drugs, you might lose your. Yeah, okay. Let's get on. Let's get on with this. Okay. I would never get. I, I personally would never get into drinking. I've seen the effect that it's had on my family. So. Cause like I had, like I didn't, I don't want to become addicted to anything. Like I like it's happened too many times in my family, to where they've gone in, somebody's gone into surgery, and come out and they've been given painkillers and become addicted to it. And I'm not trying to get addicted to pain medication and end up like the rest of my family. Like I'm not, like I'm not gonna end up like the rest of my family. The game change you. Nothing's gonna change me, but at the same time I'm growing up. Like, I'm going to continue to develop, number one, as an artist, and number two, as a person. Like, you feel me? And I, I'm, like, at the end of the day, I'm going to be a product of my atmosphere. I'm going to be, what is that? What's the saying? I'm a product of my environment. You, you could be cut from the same cloth, but still make different garments. What does it truly mean to be a product of your environment? I believe that's the biggest question I kept pondering while watching countless hours of footage from Eli Triplett's IG lives. It would be easy to attribute his current circumstances to drugs, but I think that's not the case. And the further I dug, the more I kept being left wondering if Eli truly is a product of his environment, and if so, what aspects led to what seems to be such a drastic shift in his mindset. Since his time on Lifetime's popular show, The Rap Game, Season 5, Eli has gone from the highs of the rap game's golden boy and fell into an abyss of demons and skeletons that has left him struggling to escape their grasp and pull himself out. So what has Eli Triplett been up to now? Well, like always, man, we're going to have to take a look back to see where Eli was before his time on television so we can fully understand how he got to where he is now. Like always, man, I want to take a quick second to thank you, the viewer. I appreciate anybody that's taking their time to watch these videos, like, comment, subscribe. Also, I just want to be clear, this video is not to bash or hate on anybody. I just do research on the facts, and I try and lay the story out for y'all in the best way possible. So there's a lot of darker topics in this video that I really take serious. So let's go ahead and blast right back into this then. Born in Chattanooga, Tennessee on October 24th in 2002. Elijah Triplett, or more commonly known as Eli, grew up with a multitude of experiences, some positive like family fishing trips, traveling, and getting to play sports like basketball or boxing. There you go, stick on him, keep going. Okay. One, two, Eli. But all wasn't easy growing up. The story of his family's struggles with addiction were well known and documented due to it being brought up multiple times on the show. Do you ever see my mom? Yes, I see my mom like twice a week at least. Like that's that's what you guys fail to understand is that my mom was in recovery. That means that eventually she's supposed to recover and things are supposed to like be normal. She's supposed to be sober. Like so it's not like it's not like she's just always the way that she was when I was younger, like things change. So, damn, your mom getting better, good for her. Exactly, that's that's the whole thing. It's like people act like things just stay the same way forever and that's not how it, it's not how it works. His father, Dustin, was his manager on the rap game, who at the time of the show was a single father of the two boys, Eli and his brother. Dustin's story of raising kids and working hard while his wife, Eli's mom, had battled in recovery from her struggles with addiction was one that a lot of people connected with and it helped Eli seem more relatable. Influenced heavily by some of the rappers he would listen to growing up, like MGK, combined with some of the things he would see growing up in Chattanooga, 
Eli would begin rapping in 2010 when he was just eight years old. At first, just freestyling with his friends. Around 2015, he would begin posting his raps online. Yeah, it's different. It's only 13, but I'm killing this business. Tennessee is a really big hot spot for the rap scene right now. And a lot of rappers coming out of that area have a lot of influence. Then people in the game come from Tennessee, like Yo Gotti, Moneybag Yo, legends like Juicy J. One of my favorite from that area is actually Isaiah Rashad and so many more. But with even such a diverse rap scene, Eli would still stand out like a sore thumb. His detractors would say with him being so young, inexperienced, and in their opinion, having the look of a privileged kid who didn't have to struggle, it made it hard for them to relate to the music. But you can't always judge a book by its cover. Where you struggle from my whole life, where you struggle from? See, that's the problem, bro. People come, people come to me and they judge a book by its cover, bro. That dude... That's the problem. You judge a book by its color, you look at me and automatically assume I've never struggled for anything in my life. And I'm just a privileged white kid and I just, I've had everything handed to me. I grew up. You, gotta, you, gotta you don't know me. That's. I'm sure I'll probably look like him too. I look like your average white boy. And I hate it. I hate it. Because I just get thrown into the category of like every other white boy, let alone every other white boy that tries to rap. Eli would start tagging Jermaine Dupri and his freestyles online. I'm gonna get up in a minute, it's been a minute since I've been winning, no God. But I'm gonna keep working and grinding. Up. We came in here with nothing, no, we something. We just had to catch a wave, no dude, rack. Right? You ain't even about that ass. Whatever, I would give you my jacket and then you wanted the weather, but you don't know how I'm feeling, so I would write you a letter. And then eventually, IE would reach out to him to see if he wanted to join the season five of the rap game. Season five would by far be the most controversial and even had Jermaine Dupri questioning himself and the talent of the cast after the season. Well, this season, um,. You can see my frustration for the first time. Really? Um, Cause I, um, this season I, I, I feel like I was catfished. What you mean? What you mean? <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. That was. So what I mean by that is that when I, the way I pick these kids is that I go off of you know YouTube, Instagram, see activity. Right. And so when I bring these kids to Atlanta, the first thing I always try to do is have them perform, whether it be for me, my crew, or audience. This group wasn't really that good. Mm. Um, and I was really, really frustrated. And you, you see it. And the thing about this show is it's not a reality show that's scripted. Right. Mm -hmm. It happens based off my heart. What, what happens, happens based off my heart. And once I was sitting there, I was just like, oh my God. Well, you gotta battle this person. You gotta battle this person. If y'all wanna stay in the house, y'all gotta battle. It just turned into this whirlwind of just me trying to see who's definitely better than the next person. Eli definitely stood out on this season and showcased his talent early. Season five was full of firsts, from battles every week to unfortunate health scares, kids beefing with parents. It was a wild season to say the least. Eli will be the center of some of this though with his rap battle with Naya Kassan. Naya is also someone we made a video on, so make sure y'all go back and check that out as well after you finish this one. Towards the end, Eli and his father would even start trying to play mental games with the rest of the cast, even resulting in an almost fight between Dustin and Sire. We were just sitting there at the hit list. We were just like, oh, come on, please let me be on the hit list. Don't call our bluff, because we had everybody, like, we were playing mind games like crazy, bro. I see Sire try to fight my dad, bro. At, at this point, it's no hard feelings with Sire, but then, whoo. Ooh. They had to get me out the house for a couple days like we literally we went on vacation a couple days after that I was heated bro because what had happened right is uh, They were having a conversation about me back at the house. It was our interview day, right? So I was at the so so deaf studio. Okay, this is the tea for you guys By the way, it's no beef between me and Sire at this point So y'all don't try and start that I'm just gonna explain the situation because it was on national television So I'm not gonna ignore it, right? So I was at the so so deaf studio doing my interview, right? And my dad was at the house and shoot, I lost my turn of thought. I was on at the So So Deaf studio and they were talking about me at the house. So they drove my dad back to the house to have him involved in that conversation. My mom just walked in. Okay, they drove my dad back to the house to be involved in that conversation. And then of course you guys saw how it escalated. And then at one point Sire tried to fight my dad. Uh, like he started bucking up to my dad. So it was a pretty crazy situation, and I can't say that it was smart not having me in the house because I can't tell you how I would have reacted having somebody try to fight my father, and it wouldn't have definitely been a good situation. Me and Cyrus are still good. We're on speaking terms at this point, but I can't tell you how it would have went otherwise.
with social media being more prevalent than ever, Eli will hop on IG Live after every episode to connect with his fans. That is where I got the best look at his mindset. The season's first episode will air in 2019. This year for Eli will be the most hectic and was full of so many changes. In my opinion, the cast of season four and five got a bad deal. Without them being able to go on a so-so summer 17 tour, it just seemed like they didn't have the same opportunity as the previous seasons. Although this isn't the only factor to the earlier kids' successes, I, I wouldn't be honest if I failed to mention the effect of not being able to connect with those fans and give a taste of what these kids can actually offer musically as an actual artist ended up being detrimental to seeing some of the growth expected after being on national TV. After losing to Tyler Rain, Eli would go on to do shows for the next couple of months with his father and going live documenting it along the way. You want to come to New England? I definitely want to come to New England. Please put me in New England. That would be legendary, bro. I would get a passport for pass a passport for it and everything, bro. New England, man, that's the north. That's the top half of the United States, dude. That's like Massachusetts. Are you serious? Yeah. I thought that was like out of the country. No, before you get caught, I'm gonna... Man, I was so happy. Around these days, the triplet troop, as he called his followers, would push Eli's content feverishly through the internet. His fan pages were some of the most dedicated I've seen yet. At the end of 2018, he had dropped a technical file mixtape, and he would follow it up in 2019 with dropping No Pressure, which was loved by a lot of his fans. But those same supporters would start switching up after Eli started to mature as the year went along. He would graduate high school early online and then started focusing on his music. As he experimented more, his sound would start to change. The fans knew from the first couple of bars that it was clear. He was ditching his clean cut persona and about to enter a new phase. What do you mean, bro? I gotta keep, I gotta keep my target. I gotta keep my image clean, you feel me? I can't be out here, can't be out here swearing or being a bad influence, you know? I gotta be good to the... <laughs> I gotta be good for the youth, you know. I gotta be good for the youth. Uh huh, uh huh. I gotta be. I'm a positive influence, you know. I gotta keep my image completely clean. That change was drastic, and the optimism from his voice seemed to fade as time passed. He would start hashtagging bad influence, and eventually his captions would get progressively darker with captions like 666 or I got swallowed by these streets and they turned me into a menace. Eli's life was on full display and it didn't seem like he was handling the criticism that was coming his way from the media and the online followers. It seems like 2019 his life was really similar to the seasons beginning a new year with so much optimism until the buzz from the show started to spring forth new opportunities. But when the heat of the summer came, that's when everything got real and all that was left was the fall. Eli would fall back from the internet for a while around October until early spring of the next year. With his return, his fans were really excited to see what was coming next. Unfortunately for them, Eli was no longer the kid from the show. He came back with tats, smoking, and his content was now a completely new sound as compared to when he started. With tracks like Lost. 17 years I've been trying to realize I'm fucking lost. And if I get the chance, then I'm taking my fucking shot. Secrets. Spent my childhood busy trying to be grown without realizing that all I wanted was to be home. And insecure. I swear I hate the sound of my voice, but want you to feel me. Uh, pardon my envy, but remember part of me's empty. Yeah. It appeared Eli was finding his sound with darker lyrics and an occasional rock influence. This version of music from him seemed the most genuine to me. Some of it was actually pretty good. I could see a lane for some of this music in the industry, just with a different pocket of fans. But the fans who were once obsessed with Eli's old style, now started shifting opinions and saying horrible stuff. Like Eli was just like his mom, or criticizing his parents, or just criticizing him. It was clear Eli was struggling finding his identity like so many of us at that age. But it seemed like with the increased exposure, every comment was now about him falling off or being a drug addict. By the end of 2020, it seemed like Eli was even in a darker place. Stripping, trying not to pass out on the bathroom floor. He started even posting a walk online and getting real open with his drug use. With fans now in a frenzy, they swarmed the comment section like some piranhas that smelled blood in the water. With him now seeing himself as the villain, and as the addiction seemed to start to pile up, his post started seeming like a call for help in my opinion. Eventually, death became a big theme with Eli hitting rock bottom. Your mom and dad need to help you. 
My mom is helping me. My dad is helping me. You guys need to realize that I'm a fucking person. Bro, why are there so many fucking people pulling up to this school? What time is it? It's six o'clock. Why? Are, bro, I tried to park at this school so nobody would fuck with me. And it, there's like 20 cars here, bro. Fuck this shit. It's got my anxiety up. Hopefully the ex will kick in. But nah, if the ex kicks in, I'm gonna just be anxious as fuck. I need some fucking Zans. And yes, this is a fucking teddy bear. It's comforting to me. So you can make fun of me. I don't, I don't give a fuck, bro. I, I got my nails painted. I got tattoos everywhere I go. Everybody makes fun of me. So if you want to make fun of me for sitting here holding this fucking teddy bear because I'm uncomfortable, go ahead. I don't give a shit. But fuck you. Like, you don't have any idea how that shit was. Like, I would be backstage shaking like this. Like, ready to go on stage with such bad anxiety that, like, I'm sitting there, like, breaking down mentally, like, fucking crying on the bus. Like, I don't even want to go out in front of these people. He ended up getting arrested for a couple of charges and apparently even with the rehab to try and help himself in the road to recovery. As someone who has lost a close friend of and family members who lost their lives to addiction, I have a different outlook on this than most. Just telling someone to stop using isn't always enough. If the addiction is this deep rooted, it definitely needs to be approached carefully. Obviously, you could say Eli needs help, and I agree, but it can't be healthy to constantly battle yourself, loved ones, and countless fans at the same time who expect you to live your life the way that they see fit. Honestly, if you look under any of the posts that Eli puts up, I see some of the wildest comments. The constant scrutiny, addiction, and in my opinion, as a guy that's just sitting in the room with a microphone, I believe he's struggling with an identity crisis. Words have power, and Eli seemed to become that which he once was against. The constant pressure put on him by people dictating what not to become became everything Eli was. I want to be clear again, I am not judging Eli for the turn that his life has taken and I want the best for him. Sometimes only rock bottom can become the foundation in which you rebuild your life on. Currently, he's still struggling with a lot of the comments. In my opinion, Eli has to choose when he's ready to turn his life around and be ready to accept the help so it could be effective. It seems even currently, as of 2022, he isn't in the best place still. It seems he got kicked out and he was even homeless for a little while. I need home until further notice. This life sucks. It seems he's posting updates to his life now on TikTok. He's been very open with his journey for the most part. And it's good to see that after all of these years of him trying hard substances, he's tried to get on the road to recovery. Going to church for the first time in eight years. Uh, fit check dog, Pete the Thames. Uh, walking in that motherfucker for a smoke break first. I'm eating the bread, shit was all right. Uh, bottoms up, you know, getting drunk in that motherfucker. A lot of his posts talk about his family and periods of growth in his life. After what seems to have been a downward spiral fueled by various reasons, Eli seems like he's trying to learn how to fly again. The rap game season five only aired a few years ago, and there seems to have been so many changes since then. Was Eli ever the clean cut kid that was being displayed on the rap game show? Or is the Eli we're seeing now currently who he truly was all along? One of the greatest tragedies in life is to lose your own sense of self and to accept the version of you that's expected by everyone else. To be yourself in a world that's constantly trying to make you something else can be one of the greatest accomplishments. People will always have opinions on what's best or not good for Eli, but it will be up to him to choose what's best for himself. Eli openly discusses his drug vengeance, mental struggles, and even suicide attempts. It's too late to go back and start brand new, but as long as he's alive, he can always start now and make a brand new ending. Recovery is about progression, not perfection. For anybody that stuck around to the end of this video, I do appreciate you. I know your time is valuable, so I appreciate anybody that's taking any time to like, comment, or subscribe on these videos. It's your boy Stone Astro, man. This was a tough one for me to make with some very serious topics. So please, if anybody is watching this video, don't go back and attack anyone. Let people live their lives and kind of figure things out at their own pace. But like always, man, we're going to get up on out of here. So go ahead and drop that outro. I don't say a lot of things that I can't take back. And if you want to know the truth, there's a lot of good things that I know I like. I can't talk to you. I can't tell you the truth.